Hi everyone, welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sobo Masjik, and today we're going to be working with Zoe Strang and Joan Gauguin. And they're a couple of pals of mine that I paint with once in a while, and we're going to be doing some gel plate printing and just having lots of fun with figurative work, and hopefully some transfers will work out. So I'm going to put some black, and as usual, uh, this is the Golden Open Carbon Black. So I haven't put a lot on. Now what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to add a little bit of thinner. So a few drops of thinner. The reason for that is we're going to be working quite a long time with the black. And I also want to make it a little more fluid. Now I have an image that we put underneath. I don't think we're going to see it that much, but we'll see. And again, with blobs, you just roll in a circle and you have your brayering off paper close at hand, I hope. And you just brayer it off. Now, if I take enough of this off, I might be able to see my image underneath. If we're really, really lucky. Yes, I'm starting to see our image. Now you got to remember that everything prints in reverse. So if you have it oriented facing right, it's going to print left. So if, if that's not what you want, then you have to change the position of your work. So I'm going to start wiping now, probably with a Kleenex to begin with, some of the major areas uh, around the face. Now for a finer detail, so leave uh, anything that's going to be black because that's in our background. So the eyebrow should be left. So take out anything that's white. So I can sort of see her nose. Not well. <laughs> and her eyelashes are black, so we have to leave that. And here under the nose we can take some of it away. You're going to get very painterly results. And just a little bit on the mouth. In the center of the mouth, of course, is fairly dark, so you want to leave that. So that gives us a little bit of detail, and I'm going to just take most of the ear out, except the areas that are black. So you're kind of working in reverse. Now, with the neck, I think it might be too extreme to use a so let's try just a spatula and see, and just scrape it back. We want to keep it fairly dark, and that seems to be working. And then the rest of it, I think we'll just make up. <laughs> you can do marks there or whatever. Maybe you can give her a little bit of a ruffle. She's wearing, here's where your creativity comes in. And I'm not sure the way this is looking, whether it's a male or female. <laughs> and, uh, so, okay, with hair, we're going to get really crazy. Um, what did I use the other day? It was, I think, just a paper towel. So she's got fairly, so I'm just going to do some interesting marks here. You can use any of your tools. You can do cross hatching. Now she has a sort of pompadour haircut here. Maybe she's going to a ball and her hair is all done up wonderful, right? So, <laughs> okay. 
And we're going to just straggle a few little stragglers down. And to some degree, if you um, sort of mess up, you can't really brayer the paint back, but you can go over top and change it a little bit. But the whole point is this is mark making and the whole point is to be joyful and have fun with it. And we'll see what happens. Now this is the first step. So we're going to print it. I have, you know, my usual Gorilla registration here with double tape. And we're going to print and We'll do this fairly quickly. Oh yeah, I'm not sure we need color on this. <laughs> Works really good. I'll show it to the camera. Um, I think the overhead camera will, will get it. So there you go. So that's the first step. Now that's what I want you to do now, and uh, so go for it. So not too much, Zoe. Yeah, just a tiny bit of paint. Yeah, and don't forget uh, the thinner to go with it. So you have a little bit more time. Okay, just put it in the middle there. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, is it coming out? Just yeah. There's all these technical issues always, right? <coughs> just turn it the other way. <laughs> That's what we call. Um, is it going? Yes. Did helps you get when, it? Helps when the tap's open. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So it's all part of the fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, brayer it out. Watch your paper so that you don't mark the paper. That's it. Keep it flat. Now your method, uh, Joan, with the um, paper over further is good as long as your plate doesn't move. So you might want to tape your plate down on the edges. Because it is. So here's uh, some of these little white things. Do whatever it takes to remove the paint. Kleenex works well but also the little knives and things. <laughs> <laughs> things flying here. <laughs> and this one. <laughs> uh, okay. Now always leave your brayer up this way because over time if you leave it on the roller it, um, that's it, yeah. Then uh, it get, gets sort of uh, square instead of round. That's why we do that. Okay, now start taking off. Can you see your image at all? Not yet. Okay, take it off. You might want to uh, just open that magazine so that you can bray it off. Yeah. There you go. There, I think you've got it. So we just enough so that you can see the image. And the nice thing about having an image underneath like that is uh, you don't have to worry about proportions, it's all there for you. And of course we're doing such different stuff that as far as copyright is concerned, you're never going to have to worry because it doesn't look anything like the, like the original image. Uh, your marks have to be fairly large, right? Otherwise it's not going to print. So you can't do really, really thin lines. If it helps, um, take a brush and take remove some. So you might want to use a brush too. I think I've removed too much. And remember to leave the black areas black. Zoe, are you just about finished, ready to print? Just Joan? Just about ready. Just about ready. All right, the last few touches. Yes. And busy wiping away and putting back on. So this is one of the reasons that 
you know, the monotypes are called the painterly prints because this is one way of working with them. Often printmakers have worked with plexiglass plates rather than the gel plates and we're lucky that they've invented gel plates that are print so beautifully. Whereas the plexiglass plates, it often showed sort of a white grain, little dots of white that showed up in the print and not very attractive and you had to work with it quite a bit. So in this case, uh, it will print everything, every mark, so <laughs> that sometimes is a bit of a hazard, <laughs> but we can correct almost anything. And if all else fails, we can just do another one. Don't fuss though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, print. There you go, yep. Just flip it over carefully, nice and straight. That's good. Okay, now you want, might want to use the Varenne. Both hands and brand work, yeah. Make sure when you pull it up, pull it up by the edges to make sure you've got all your edges. There's nothing worse than having a beautiful print and then one of the edges is white. Okay, the reveal, the big reveal, come on. <laughs> wow, yeah, oh my goodness, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, you don't have to rip, take the tape off, you just hold it up. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, looking very nice. So it helps to have that image underneath, right? So, okay, step two. So, <laughs> we had a minor situation here. I, I squeezed out some transparent red iron oxide. And as you can see from this little plate, it squirted everywhere, so I'm sharing it with my gang here. And uh, I had to clean myself up because uh, I still got a bit of reddish yellow all over. Anyway, no problem. So now we're going to be putting on this little side plate, we're putting a few colors and we'll try and get some of the skin tones that are in the face. And we're using brushes to add that on. I need some white. Thank you. And just to modify the color a bit, get rid of the blob on there. Um, I put, this is uh, my folk art white and it has um, a little bit of the open thinner in it just to make it last a bit longer because we're going to be working for a bit. I need a brush and I'm just going to try and make some kind of a skin tone here. And I'll probably need a little bit of Elizarin Crimson. This is, the yellow was um, just cad yellow light. A little bit of the white mixed in. And the oxide red. And I'm going to grab some now it depends on the skin tone you're trying to get. If you're trying to get a nice dark skin tone, well then you might need a bit of violet, um, maybe even a bit of green. Just your imagination is endless, right? So you can just do whatever you want. <laughs> okay, so I'm just adding a tiny bit of lizard crimson to get that skin tone up. And we're Pretty good here, tiny bit more yellow. So I'm using a fairly small brush for some features here. Um, I'm just looking at her skin tones, see her forehead. And the brush marks have got to be very thin, otherwise you're gonna have blobs. And make them interesting, like every which way. This has got to be painterly, the whole point. Remember to leave any black areas. And just, if you want to lighten things up, 
figure out where your light source is. That's always a good thing. In this case, it's from the right. But of course, we're going to be reversing that. So it'll be from the left. So, so I'm just painting all that in. Maybe a little bit more uh, lizard and crimson in the cheek area. Let's give her a blush. <laughs> okay. We're getting there. A little bit of the ear here. And I think the ear is dark on the inside, so I might just do a little bit more there. The point is to make this painterly. You're not trying to get a wonderful representation. You just try to have some fun painting a face. And of course, for demonstration purposes, I'm just doing it fast and furiously. And then, uh, and let's punch up the lips here. And now we'll darken the underneath. I'll take some of the paint off the blob I made, just so we don't waste any of our expensive um, golden open paints. And there's quite a long neck. I think we covered a lot of this with hair, so I'm not going to worry too much about whether that's going to show up or not. Okay, We're just about there. Now you can print like do everything on here and then print it because it will hold or you can print it a little bit at a time and see how it is so so there's two ways of working here i tend to sort of be in the middle where uh, i'll print certain areas to see how the color is starting to turn out and that's not bad is it i would could punch up the chin line there a little bit. And look at how nice and painterly those marks are. That's what you're going for. Now we need that darker color for the neck area. We missed somewhere in here. A little darker. Could almost get back into the black here a little bit. And uh, I'll take suggestions for a hair color. <laughs> Should she be dark? Should be, like be light? Yeah. yeah? Dark. Dark? Okay. So maybe we'll go back into the black and, and bring it out. Okay, so I'm going to print this neck to see. This is why, you know, it's handy to have this sort of flipping back and forth kind of thing. Okay. A little bit more. It's, I have to actually paint. The thing is, when you're doing it with an image underneath, the plate is this thick, and uh, it um, distorts the image somewhat. So it could be a light slight off. Like you can see on the neck that I'm going to have to put the neck a little further. So you sort of have to keep that in mind. And always when you do that, try and keep the same position, like your head in the same position, so that that refraction problem. See, now we've got a bit more of the neck. Okay, I'm going to carry on and... Uh, We'll switch over to you guys, and you can start with some of the color. Could we have the other? The Lizard and crimson, yes you can. And the all of them actually. Okay, yep. 
Some of them are in the little tubes as well. You can't paint me. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I don't know. <laughs> okay, and where's the black? Where's the black? I have a big blob of it if you'd like some. Oh, I'll borrow some of yours. That's okay. <laughs> you just put it in there. Thanks, dear. I have the... Mm -hmm. Well, you've got Where the, the darkest darks are, I have white. Yeah. I've done it completely reverse. You oh, see? okay, okay. So um, then your mid your mid tones will be everywhere else. It it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Do I get fired? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all creative. <laughs> it's all process. Actually, I thought yours was right and mine was backwards. Oh, she's done there. I should try that. So a lot of this is mixing, right? Getting the right tones, trying stuff. Do a little bit and then print. That might be your best bet and you'll see how it's going. Looking very promising, both of you. And it is a creative process where you're you trying stuff and yeah. And like I said, you can print every once in a while just to see, you know, how it's doing, how it's doing, and where it's doing, right? To see whether yes, it's that might be a very good idea. Ref actually. Refraction problem. interesting um, are different styles that's what I like about having people with me I have a certain style but you know adding two people uh, you get three styles right and, yes uh, it's it's some people learn three times as much Always amazing. Wow. Wow. Drama. That's what I like. <laughs> Is that what you're expecting? Well, I find the most wonderful thing about this printmaking process are the surprises. I know. I like, know. I'm really thrilled with the surprises. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> oh, when I've done this with you before, it's been really wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing like it. You, um, you just can't paint like that. That's why printmaking is, is um, incredibly fascinating, endlessly fascinating. Yes, marvelous, marvelous uh, surprises there that you really... And you get kind of that, uh, th almost a 3D, that looks very sculptural. Yours. Yeah, both well both actually, but well I love sculpture, you know that. Yes. Spontaneous and dramatic. Mm -hmm. Uh and you can get surprisingly wonderful results yes. without. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it takes you away from that very tight kind of drawing thing. Yes. That people do, you know, the tight drawing where you have an idea of what you want when you first begin. Yes. But this takes it out of your hands in a sense and makes wondrous, <laughs> uh, surprising things that, you know, yeah. and every print being different, you know. Yes, that the monotype of course is. I think it's really lovely if you stay with the same subject, uh, like the same image and alter that as you go. Let it uh, transform at each stage. So it's looking quite... Um, can you hold it up for the camera before you... Um, I wouldn't touch anything with Kleenex on the print itself. Yes, wow, yeah. That is very cool. 
and and it's it's what it's you surprising. can do is if you've got too much paint on take yes. a paper towel place it over your image oh, so whatever nice. and uh, Thank you. then as if you were doing a print you know rub the back off it takes some of the paint off could I just dab it very That's, gently? No, don't dab don't anything. It changes. Just one the, dab? No, no, no dabs. No it's, dabs. It's a print, right? So you can lift paint, the paint off just by putting that paper on top. It'll lift it back a bit so it's not so globby. But that's all you're allowed. <laughs> like this? Yes, all the way down. Yep. Blotting lipstick. And just blot it off. Blotting. Yep. With a baron or no? No, don't have to. Just rub it. If you perhaps uh, a really specific blob, then then what? it will come up. Okay. Okay. Good. Got her. <laughs> you do. What a relief. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Very nice. So as you can see, using paint and brushes on the gel plate is a very painterly approach, and extremely creative. So stay tuned for part two. And we'll be doing work with some, um, let's see, some markers. And we are going to try and do some work uh, with transfers. Now, I don't have a lot of hope for that. Uh, some of them fail, some of them are great. So we may just change to something else part way through. We will see. So please stay tuned and, um, of course, like and subscribe. Bye for now. <laughs>